Welcome to my deep dive into Apple's groundbreaking MM1 large language model. Please subscribe to follow my future videos. A significant milestone in AI, MM1 opens new doors in the realm of multimodal large language models. Introduced on March 14, 2024, it's a leap forward in blending architectural innovation with diverse datasets. Let's embark on this journey to unravel the making of MM1. MM1 is not yet publicly available, but we can clearly expect that Apple will soon join the competition on large language models with rivals like OpenAI and Google. The MM1 model technical details are presented in the following paper. I went through this paper and extracted the most important finding and results. I'm going to briefly explain these. Understanding some parts of this video may need technical background on machine learning, transformers, and large language models. But in the last section of the video, I'll present qualitative results of the paper, which are easy to follow for everyone. This is the most fascinating part of this video. At the heart of MM1's innovation is its unique approach to dataset diversity and architectural design. The model leverages a mix of image caption, interleaved image text, and text-only data, setting a new benchmark in AI performance. The key new finding here is that by proper combining of text and image data, a higher accuracy can be achieved. The MM1 team exploration reveals that the architecture of large language model, including image encoder and token count, plays a pivotal role in MM1's performance. The relative importance of each parameter has been precisely investigated. These insights pave the way for a model that understands and interprets the world in unprecedented ways. MM1 has been presented as a family of multimodal models with different number parameters and capabilities. The largest model includes 30 billion parameters. I will show in next parts of this video that the MM1 model can achieve higher performance than well-established models like ChatGPT and Gemini. MM1 isn't just about raw power, it's about nuanced understanding and interaction. From in-context predictions to following instructions across visual data, MM1 showcases a leap in AI's ability to reason and communicate. Let's see some examples of its capabilities. First, let's see some examples of the MM1 model in making predictions about context of images. Use presents an image to the model. The model responses by some information about context of images, the number of main objects in the image, and so on. In the first row, left, the model correctly detects one smartphone and one teddy bear in the image. In the next image, it detects three cats in the image. You can check the other two examples in this row. In the second row, the task given to the model is to understand part of the image that is highlighted by a red circle. For example, it can read the text in the image. Well, I was thinking I have seen this feature before. If you have used iPhone, you should know that it can detect text in the images. So, Apple had this technology before, but it has used it in a new application. In the third row, user presents an image including an object to the MM1 model. The model detects the type of object and provide an estimation of its weight. This is very amazing how this model can estimate the weight of object just by seeing its image. In the fourth row, the user has asked the model to read the numbers in the two images and return their sum. Let's slow down for a moment. I was thinking about real-world applications of such capabilities. Here we can see how MM1 model can follow instructions and reason across images. The user presents two images labeled as the image and the menu. It asks the MM1 to figure out how much he should pay for the beers based on the image and prices in the menu. The MM1 model, with 30 billion parameters, responses 12 as the price, which is correct. This result is compared with the results of two other available models, with 37 and 34 billion parameters. It can be seen that both of these models give incorrect results. Next, the user asks the model to explain why. The MM1 model simply explains how it can calculate its result, but the other models fail to do so. In this section, we like to learn how the MM1 model is constructed and what are its key elements. Building MM1 involved meticulous design choices across architecture, data, and training. I will show you more details in next sections of this video. The development of MM1 was rigorous, involving various ablations and modifications 
to identify the optimal configuration. Each step brought us closer to realizing a model that redefines multimodal learning. As we can see, two sets of ablations have been considered in this process. In the model ablations shown in the left figure, these parameters are varied to find their optimal values. Connector types, image encoder pre-training, and resolution of the image. In the right figure, we can see data ablations. These include selecting sources and composition of the data, mixing ratios for the four data types, and training hyperparameters as we scale up the model. The development of MM1 model is performed in four steps. One, a small base configuration of the model is selected. Two, each time one component of the model is changed and its effects on performance of the model is evaluated. This helps us to understand relative importance of different components used in the model. Three, using the results of previous step, we can derive the final model data configuration. Four, we scale up to this model to multi-billion parameters so that it can be used for realistic tasks. The base model data configuration has four major components. These include image encoder, vision language connector, pre-training data, and language model. These components are selected from the best available work. Our ablation experiments offered invaluable lessons, highlighting the importance of image resolution, visual token count, and data mix. These insights were crucial in crafting the final MM1 model. The encoder lesson indicated that image resolution has the highest impact, followed by model size and training data composition. The vision language connector lesson can be stated in this way. The number of visual tokens and image resolution matters most, while the type of VL connector has little effect. Finally, data lessons comprise four main conclusions. One, interleaved data is instrumental for few-shot and text-only performance, while captioning data lifts zero-shot performance. Two, text-only data helps with few-shot and text-only performance. Three, careful mixture of image and text data can yield optimal multimodal performance and retain strong text performance. Four, synthetic data helps with few-shot learning. The culmination of our efforts is the MM1 model with its state-of-the-art architecture. The image encoder is realized using a huge size Vison transformer. A C abstractor is used for vision language connection. Data comprises a carefully selected mix of 45% interleaved image text documents, 45% image text pair documents, and 10% text only documents. This configuration ensures MM1's exceptional performance across various benchmarks. To appreciate MM1's innovation, it's essential to understand the role of transformers in AI, serving as the backbone for processing text, and now with vision transformers for understanding images. Transformer is a model that was initially developed for text translation. It is proposed in a famous article with the title, Attentions is All You Need. We don't plan to dive into its detail here. Vision Transformer, VIT, is a powerful model for image classification that is used as backbone of the MM1 model. Vision Transformer was developed by Google in 2021. Scaling MM1 involved expanding its parameters to 30 billion, utilizing mixture of experts to enhance capacity without compromising speed. This scaling is key to MM1's unmatched performance in both pre-training and fine-tuning phases. Three versions of the MM1 model with 3, 7, and 30 billion parameters are developed. MM1's pre-training results are a testament to its capabilities, outperforming existing models in tasks like captioning and visual question answering. We compare three versions of the MM1 model with previous work. In this table, we can see comparison results for three versions of the MM1 model with their similar work. We note that even among its 3B, 7B, and 30B configurations, MM1 stands out, particularly in few-shot learning scenarios, showcasing its robust understanding across modalities. We can draw two major conclusions from this table. One, MM130B shows better performance compared to most of published work with much larger size. Two, regarding few-shot performance, MM1 outperforms all published prior work for pre-trained MLLMs. 
Fine-tuning MM1 involved a collection of diverse data sets, from GPT-4-generated pairs to academic tasks. An interesting point here is that synthetic data generated by GPT-4 and GPT-4V models are used for training the MM1 model. We can say that Apple has used GPT model developed by OpenAI company to train its MM1 model and achieve performance superior than GPT. This phase refined MM1's understanding, allowing it to achieve superior performance in multimodal tasks. Here we have the final table that compares performance of the MM1 model with other work, including GPT-4V and Gemini Pro and Ultra. In this table, multiple metrics are used to compare the performance. You can refer to the main paper to understand how these metrics are defined. In the red box, I have focused on the most interesting part of this table, which shows comparison of the Apple's MM1 model with OpenAI GPT-4V and Google's Gemini models. We can see that MM1 has the best VQA metric. Most of other metrics for MM1 are comparable with GPT and Gemini. The only exception is the parameter MMVET, which is very lower for MM1. Okay, how has it been so far? After getting back from this deep dive into details of the MM1 model, we can move to qualitative results. This section is very interesting and easy to follow. If you have enjoyed this video so far, you will be interested in my future work. Please don't forget to subscribe. In these experiments, user presents an image to MM1 model and ask a question. In the two top images, the user asks about the number of apple and oranges in the image. We see that MM1 can correctly answer these rather easy questions. In the two bottom images, the MM1 model is asked to read text in the image. We can see that it can read the texts with 100% accuracy. In this example, the user presents two images to the MM1 model and asks it, from scale 1 to 10, decide how similar the image is to the text prompt, a parrot deriving a car. Explain your reasoning. The MM1 response to the left image is to rate it as 1 on the scale of 1 to 10. This is correct as the image has not similarity to the described prompt. You can read its reasoning. For the right image, the MM1 scores it as 9 on the scale of 1 to 10. That shows its close similarity to the text in the prompt. Here we see an interesting experiment that showcases capabilities of the MM1 model in understanding human emotions. User presents an image and asks, after seeing the image below, how people might emotionally feel and react. In the left image, which a nature scene from window of an airplane, the MM1 model describes different senses that might be evoked by this image in human, such as awe, fascination, and tranquility. In the right image, which is a dark stairwell and shadow, can evoke feelings of unease, fear, or curiosity in people, according to MM1. In the left, two images are shown to MM1 model, and it is asked to comment on if the water is salty. The MM1 response is based on location of the water and the fact that animals drink fresh water. You can read the explanations provided by MM1. In the right, two images of food are shown to MM1 model, and it is asked to explain which food is healthier. The MM1 response is based on the presence of broccoli, vegetables, and meat. A real-world application of this capability is to show images of a food to MM1 model and ask for its comments about healthiness of the food. For example, it can be used in restaurants and food factories to make healthier foods. This is an experiment in which its role is assigned to the MM1 model. Assume you are a teacher. Please use the figure to explain the distinction between evaporation and evapotranspiration. Well, when the role of teacher is assigned to the MM1 model, it provides responses that are consistent with this role. This is an important property for large language models. We can read the response that MM1 has provided. This is the last experiment that we discuss in this video. Three images are presented to the MM1, and it is asked to estimate the temperature in each image. In the MM1 response, the temperature is estimated to be 25, 30 degrees in the left image, which is a scene on a beach, minus 20 to minus 30 degrees in the middle image, which is a snowy mountain, and 15, 20 degrees in the right image, which shows animals grazing. Okay. We reach to the end of out video. Here is a summary of what we have learned.
Apples has published the MM1 Multimodal LLM. M1 architecture and training data structure are the main contributors to its outstanding capabilities. The largest MM1 model has 30B parameters. MM130B outperforms GPT-4V and Gemini in some performance metrics. It is expected that the model become publicly available soon. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. If you have any comments, write it below. I will do my best to answer and use them in my future videos.